Hi, I'm Steve Whaley with Bluebird, and welcome to a bird's eye view, where in this episode, we're actually gonna be talking about renewable propane. And here with me today is Cameron Engel of Blue Star Gas, and I don't know of anybody in the country who supplies more renewable propane into transportation fleets than Blue Star. Cameron, thanks a whole lot for joining us today. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here and talk about it. Good, good. Now, we, we, we know what, re, what propane is. You know, we're the largest producer of propane in the world. You know, we've got, you know, 30 billion gallons every year and 10 billion gallons gets used here locally in the United States and 20 billion gets to go to 30 million vehicles worldwide. But uh, what's, this, what's this about renewable propane? Um, tell us a little bit about your role with Blue Star yeah. and, uh, and how and why you're moving renewable propane. Yeah. So are you familiar with renewable diesel R99? I've heard of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So renewable diesel R99, we've heard about biodiesel and some other things before. Renewable diesel is a refined renewable product. So it's not just biodiesel where they're mixing in these wasted uh, animal fats, used cooking oil. They're actually refining it. Mm -hmm. And part of that refining process, uh, there's byproducts, different hydrocarbons that come along with it. We can use them for different needs, such as renewable propane. So it's just a byproduct of that process. And as we see more R99 renewable diesel come on board, we'll see a lot more propane as well. Okay. So what what is what about this sustainable aviation fuel process too? Is that is that kind of like the renewable diesel? Yeah, absolutely. And another byproduct of that sustainable and renewable aviation fuel is that uh, renewable propane just comes right along with it. Okay, so you can't not make it. All right. So absolutely, it's it, it's kind of like the or, the organic propane that we have from you know what we used to get a lot from the uh, the, the refinement of gasoline and diesel. Uh, so that's where this renewable propane comes from. So um, with with your particular company now, Blue, Blue Star Gas is 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 mostly on the West Coast. What what exactly is your footprint? Yeah, uh, so our footprint is Oregon, California, Washington, Utah, and Arizona. Our company was founded in a small town of Garberville, California, okay. uh, and we've grown to fourteen different locations, family owned since nineteen thirty eight. And uh, I've been joined the board and or not joined the board, but I hopped on board in two thousand sixteen and. Uh, been dedicated to the auto gas program ever since. Okay, so auto gas, that's that's when, you know, you're using propane in the the realm of transportation. Um so with with that, how much of your uh, uh percentage-wise of, of all the propane that you're you're distributing is is actually renewable now in that transportation sector? Yeah, uh in the transportation sector, uh it's a high percentage, but company-wide we're 20% of our entire uh propane is renewable propane. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the West Coast kind of leads the way in the, uh, the, 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 the alternative space uh, with reduced emissions and whatnot. Um, I, I know from, you know, just the, the study of the EPA maps and such, you have a carbon intensity of, of, of regular propane you know, is usually about 80 nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the individual electric grids for, for each individual state is has, has a wide range, you know, from Vermont being three all the way up to Wyoming being um, 300. Yep. Um, so with the Western states, what are they doing to help reduce that, that carbon intensity and all the energies that are in transportation? Yeah. Uh, so gasoline is the, the standard that we use of 100. Mm -hmm. uh, that carbon intensity score of 100 is the baseline gasoline. Right. Okay. Uh, so renewable propane, the product that we're getting is uh, 20.5. Oh, wow. Uh, so while get propane, conventional, is clean at 80, you see a, a reduction of 20%, right, from gasoline to propane. We're all the way down to a fifth of what gasoline is with renewable propane. It is it is real clean, um, especially when you compare it to all the other fuels out there. Okay. Now, what, what I've seen happen, I think it was in California first and now has gone to Washington and Oregon, are these low-carbon fuel standard credits. Yep. How, do, how does that work? Yeah, so each state has implemented a different program. We have the LCFS, low-carbon fuel standard, clean fuels program. They're all adopted kind of in a different way, but they serve as a pathway 
uh, to establish how those credits get issued mm -hmm. um, and a marketplace for different producers to be able to offset carbon intensity and and spread spread a little bit of that reduction in carbon and uh, in the marketplace. So the LCFS is really what puts in the place the e economic viability of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's already clean. It's already inexpensive, but they just want to maximize the potential of that renewable fuel. Okay. Very good. Very good. So at 20.5, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're not just getting near zero in our toxic emissions of, mm -hmm. of NOx and, and particulate matter and so forth. But we're getting, you know, near zero in our in our in our carbon footprint as well. Uh, so we we see the the electric grid moving and and cleaning up its uh, it it its act there, you know, with renewables like solar and wind and and even you know more hydro. Um, but you're doing the same on the on the propane side. So we're not we're not standing still. We're uh, we're actually making those reductions. So let's let's talk about where is this actually being used now. Um, you know, you, you, you take care of the, the auto gas side of, uh, blue, blue star. Um, where, where are you implementing the renewable now? What, what, what fleets are you seeing that going into? Yeah. So transportation services, community based, uh, and school district is the primary users of them. Oh, so, uh, we have over 13 school districts currently that are being served with renewable propane, uh, with two more to come on over the summer and a lot of community transit organizations as well. Uh, King County Metro, their access transportation services is 100% renewable propane currently. How about that? So what does it take to move from, you know, using regular propane to then using renewable propane? Um, is it different vehicles? Is it different infrastructure? What, what's, what, what do you have to do as a, as, a, as a transportation unit now to take that next step to, to reducing your carbon footprint? That's the fantastic thing about renewable propane. It is molecularly identical to its conventional counterpart. It's a drop in fuel. There's no transition other than what you actually uh, put inside that tank and use in your vehicle. So you, your your drivers won't know the difference. Your mechanics won't know the difference. It's it's the same energy content as well. Yep, it's the same energy content. Uh, it drops in and functions exactly the same. You'll have no driver experience or any different usability experience between the two of them. Okay. Well, well very good. So uh, in the student transportation sector of this, who, who all's using this um, in, in school buses that, that we're making for, for operating on propane? Yeah. Uh, Beaverton School District was our first school dr district to uh, integrate renewable propane. At, they're, in, they're in Oregon. Right? Yeah, they're in Oregon. They are the largest school district ran transportation service in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, so their own operating of their school district. There are uh, just over 300 school school buses that they have. Okay. Of which 67 are propane, 20 are electric, and the remainder are R99 renewable diesel. Uh, they serve 56 schools and have over 39,000 students that attend those 56 schools. So they got a lot of kids to move around every day. Sure. And they're they're hitting it on all all fronts. Absolutely. They, they have a diversified fleet because they... They know there's different fits for different parts of their fleet, and they want to maximize the most out of uh, their fleet and see the most carbon reduction and uh, economic viability in their program. I remember when they when they first started on on propane, but it was uh, I think a year ago now that they started uh, and dropped in the renewable propane. Yeah. So have you gotten any feedback from from? From Beaverton on this? Absolutely. Uh, so Craig Beaver, their administrator of transportation services, was kind enough to let me ask him a few questions and about his transition. Uh, we started serving them renewable propane in April of 2023, last year. And uh, if you don't mind, I got a few Q&As with him that I would like oh, yeah? to share. Well, please do. Yeah, absolutely. Made sure to bring my notebook and be prepared for this. Uh, yeah, so Craig Beaver, transportation director, uh, he's been there a long time. Uh, they first implemented... Their first propane school bus uh, in 2000 and uh, 15. They started with 12. Okay. So they've come a long ways, 12 to 67, and they are projected to have a diversified fleet, one-third, one-third, one-third of renewable propane, EV, and R99. So they're not looking for one full source solution for every single vehicle in their fleet. They know that, like we talked about, the diversified fleet is what was going to serve them best. 
Okay. Yeah, because especially with the range, I know, you know, um, uh, with the, you know, renewable uh, propane, um, I mean, it's the same, you know, energy content and everything else. So uh, with a 400-mile range that we have on our propane buses, um, that takes care of a good bit of, uh, of, of, of the, you know, activities as, as, as well as anything else. Uh, so is, is the renewable propane um, just at, at one particular location or, I mean, do they have more than one infrastructure? Yeah, they have two separate uh, lots and we have two fueling stations at the separate lot. So we have a renewable propane fueling station, mm -hmm. two 1,000 gallon tanks, four dispensers. They can move a whole lot of buses through there quite quickly. So they don't see a, any impact on their refueling and, and their efficiency of taking care of those buses and getting them back on route. Great. Uh, so in school year 2022, 2020, and 23, they averaged a cost of about 81 cents per mile for their conventional propane. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually saw a reduction in their operating costs with renewable propane. Uh, they dropped down from 81 cents per mile to 72 cents per mile. Wow. Not really exactly how that uh, worked, but maintenance costs was a lot of that. This renewable propane is clean. Um, it's very clean, as well as some improved filtration that was put on their infrastructure uh, during the time. And that 10 months of savings was about $41,000 from moving from conventional propane to renewable propane. Ah. So I went back with him a little bit to get his perspective of that initial change in 2015 from diesel to propane. So I asked him, you know, how'd that affect your fleet moving from diesel to propane? Uh, he said the average cost per gallon uh, has been pretty competitive between propane and diesel, but the major savings was a reduction in repairs and operating costs. Uh, oh, no particulate matter filter, Yep. no knock sensors, no diesel exhaust fluid. All those things that diesel has to have to, yep. to meet the ever more, you know, stringent emission reductions um, that are that are required. And, and I know this year, 2024, we went from 0.2 to 0.05 uh, on the on the NOx level. And 2027 is just around a corner. And that's when it goes to 0.035. Mm -hmm. So even more diesel exhaust treatment is going to be necessary for, for for diesel buses to exist in that in that in that realm. So with with propane we just have a three-way catalytic converter and uh, like most people have on their on their car uh, so the maintenance cost saving it's easy to see why he's he's saving so much in that particular realm absolutely so that that maintenance cost saving was a 58 percent reduction from diesel to propane that 58 percent for 2023 school year was two hundred and seventy one thousand dollars. You know, we're talking some real money now we're talking some real money uh, the next I asked him how his propane fueling experience was because we want to make sure that that fueling experience is equal to or better than their gasoline or diesel fueling experience. And you're, you're providing the infrastructure for, for dispensing that propane there too, right? I mean, it's, it's part of the whole, the whole deal that you're doing as a service. It's the infrastructure as well as the fuel. Yep. Infrastructure, fueling, service, maintenance, and training. So driver training, all of that. Uh, not only do we do on-site infrastructure, we actually operate the largest public refueling network in the on the West Coast. Uh, in the state of Washington, we have 14 public refueling stations. So when you're looking at taking your school buses on field trips, you can utilize any of that public refueling network. So that range anxiety kind of just vanishes at that point. Uh -huh. So is that a key fob or a, a card? It's a card know? lock, just similar to they would see with any fleet card lock facility. Sure. And so, I mean, does that have certain hours or is that... 24-7. 24-7, okay. Yeah, we have uh, about a 1,000 public vehicles, or sorry, vehicles that use the public infrastructure across the state of Washington every day. So they're just stopping at the location and filling up throughout the day, just like you would at a gasoline fueling site. Wow, okay. So with renewable propane, um, I can I can see, I mean, with a carbon intensity of 20.5, I can see more and more people wanting to move in that direction. Um, are you going to have enough? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so we see, like I talked about, 20% of our entire makeup of renewable propane right now. So mm -hmm. of propane is renewable propane. Uh, in 2022, there is about 10 million gallons that came to market. Uh, we are projected for 2025 with the refineries that are putting it back into the marketplace to be about 125 million gallons. Oh, wow. So there is not a uh, 
a lack of supply. And with that, we talked about how it's just a byproduct of that R99 process. Right. So those 10 min- million gallons came from one of a dozen plus refineries. So the refineries aren't actually putting that back in the marketplace. REG, uh, back in 2018, Blue Star Gas, along with Blossom and Gas, reached out to them and asked, you know, we know that you're making this renewable propane, but we see a need in the transportation market for this to be available to mm-hmm. all of our customers. And we think it would be beneficial for you to uh, put that back in the marketplace. These refineries are taking that renewable propane, those other hydrocarbons, and breaking them down to hydrogen to power their facilities. So they, they're taking it for themselves because they know how clean it is. They trust this clean fuel to provide the power for their refineries. So it's getting it back to the marketplace. And as we see more demand for every school district, that demand for those refineries and those producers to put it back in the marketplace instead of using it to power their own refineries, we'll see that increase as well. So as far as the demand to be able to meet the needs of these transportation services, uh, the more we sell, the more is going to be available. Sure. And I know the the low carbon fuel standards also in the credits that, mm-hmm. that go along with that also incentivize that that, that process. Uh, and that's in, in California and Oregon and Washington. Uh, but you you had mentioned Blossman Propane, and I know that they uh, uh, like like Blue Star is is heavily into renewable propane, uh, but their footprint is more on the uh, the, the East Coast, the Southeast, and, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I just saw uh, that in Virginia, on the state contract for the for the uh, for in Virginia, they have renewable propane on there, and it was only. 38 cents a gallon more than the conventional propane. So I, I, I think you're right. You know, everything that happens on the West Coast usually ends up everywhere else. Um, but even without the low carbon standard fuel credits, we're, we're seeing fleets on the East Coast wanting to migrate more to, hey, what can else can we do? We're already using propane. So we want to we want to take that next step, um, just like the electric grid is, is getting cleaner. Uh, our, our propane energy, of which you know we have more than than anybody else in the world, uh, is is getting cleaner too. Do you, do you see anything on the horizon for the low carbon fuel standard? You know, credits being adopted in other states. Uh, coming yeah, up? absolutely. So other states, they're really taking a good look at, like you talked about before, what they can do for their other energy resources, from uh, hydro to solar and wind power, and part of that inward look on their own environmental carbon intensity is what they can do with other renewable fuels. Uh, We see other states that are looking at, uh, on the ballot, they have their clean fuel standard. Um, LCFS is just California's, but each state has clean fuel standard, cap and invest and cap and trade. Uh, So we see other states that are beginning to adopt some of these things, or at least put them in legislator to start incentivizing those renewable fuels in those states. Okay. All terrific. Well, Cameron, I can't thank you enough for, for coming out and joining us here on our, on our podcast. And this has been a bird's eye view of our renewable propane. 